Hey everybody, welcome to K9 Academy Online. I'm Joel and we are going through uh, some of the questions that came in from our Facebook ad for K9 Academy Online. You may have seen it. And if not, go over to Facebook. Uh, I don't know, maybe you can do a search for K9 Academy Online and see if it'll pop up. Um, it's it's kind of weird how you find those things. I've gone looking for ads before and I sometimes have a hard time finding them. Yeah, that thing I saw, I want to go get it now. And then I couldn't find the ad later. Um, but if you've seen it, uh, it basically, it gives you two free uh, lessons, uh, how to teach your dog to sit and lay down, just so you can kind of see our instructional methodology. Uh, and then if you sign up um, from the ad, you get a 14 day trial of the academy inside. So um, you can also go back, watch some of these lives, been kind of going through some of these questions. I also uh, gave a little bit more in-depth description of what you find on the inside of the academy. But today, we are going to talk about how to do a good recall. How to do a good recall. And this is, a lot of people struggle with this, uh, with the dogs, you know, running around, being all crazy, not wanting to come back to their people, that sort of thing. <clears throat> so there's two things that you need uh, for a good recall. The first one is you need to be bonded with your dog. Now, when I say bonded with your dog, I'm not talking about you like your dog and you want your dog to come to you. The bond is on the dog's side. So the dog has to be bonded to you. And when the dog is bonded to you, it will want to be with you, to come to you. The best way to build a bond with your dog is to be close to your dog a lot. Now, I don't mean like sitting in your lap or anything like that. But for your dog to be with you, when you're sitting on the couch, it should be laying at your feet. When you're walking around, it should be walking at your side. The more your dog spends just right there with you, the closer the bond will be between you and your dog. So a lot of people neglect that part of this process. And then they let their dog roam around. They let their dog check out everything else in the house, hang out wherever it wants. And then they wonder why the dog doesn't want to come to them when they're outside, right? So have the dog close to you as much as possible. <clears throat> and if you work or whatever, that's not a big deal. Just as soon as you get home, the dog stays pretty much with you until bedtime. So that's the first step. Once the dog is bonded, and that takes two to four weeks to really start to get that tight bond there, okay? Once that happens, we use, we call it a long line. So it's anywhere between 30 and 100 feet long, depending and um, if you want to make a cheap one, just go to like Lowe's Home Depot, get a three inch diameter rope, something that's not going to burn your hands. If the dog tries to run, you can get a grip on it. Uh, you can go a little bigger than that, a half inch if you want to, uh, but three eighths is usually okay. Uh, whatever length you want, you know, it needs to be at least 30 feet though. And a 50 foot one is kind of a nice in between because it, uh, it lets you create a little bit more distance and still use this technique. So you get your long line, and uh, if you're using a rope, you need to buy a clip, right? One of those little snap link clips, like it's at the end of your leash or lead. And uh, you tie the rope onto that. You clip that onto the dog's collar. And uh, depending on the age of your dog, if it's a young dog, I'll clip it onto their flat collar. If it's an older dog or a dog that wants to fight or resist a little bit more, I'll clip it onto their front collar. <clears throat> and then you do a down stay exercise where you put the dog in a down walk away from the dog and and we go over this in more detail and show you all the preceding steps and all that uh, over at the academy but you, uh, you walk to basically the end of the lead okay so your dog needs to do a down stay long enough for you to get that far away from them and then when you call them you call them and I call it reeling the dog in so you call them and then you're you're pulling the lead the slack out of the lead as they run towards you Right now, the reason we do it this way is because a lot of times they'll start coming towards us. They're like, "Yay, I get to do something!" And because uh, they've been, you know, waiting, they've been laying in their place or sitting in their spot. And then you basically say, "You can break your position," and they're like, "Yay!" And they start to run towards you. And then they're like, "Whoa, what's that squirrel over there?" And they divert off to whatever little thing just distracted them. Right. So when you have your long line and you're reeling it in, taking that slack out, as soon as they go to divert off. You just continue a positive verbal praise. So you should be doing that the whole time. 
we use let's go and good go, good go, good go, good go. And as we're praising the dog with good go, we're just reeling them in. Whether I'm basically having to force them to come my direction or whether they're just diverting off and I'm just giving a little, you know, as I'm pulling, it gets a little plump on the lead and, uh, and they go, oh yeah, sorry, I'm supposed to come to you. However that works out, I reel them into me and then once they get there, they get lots and lots of praise. Okay, so if you make this a negative thing and you start yelling at the dog for not coming and all this other kind of stuff, you will just make your problem worse. If you make it a as positive a thing as you can, okay, so if they're on a correction color when you're pulling them in, there might be a little bit of initial, like, oh, I got a little correction. But as soon as they get to you, the result of coming to you is lots and lots of praise. And when I say lots and lots of praise, I mean, 15 to 20 seconds of that person looks like they're kind of crazy loving on that dog level of praise, especially in the beginning, right? You tone it way down as you get more mature and as as the dog gets more uh, disciplined. But you need to create a strong desire in the dog to come to you. You do that by building the bond, number one. And then when they recall and we use the long line to make sure that they do, then they get lots and lots of praise. This is the only time, by the way, that my dogs get belly rubs and chest rubs and things like that. Uh, When I pet my dogs in the house, I pet their heads, I pet behind their ears, I might stroke up and down their back, they kind of like that. But I don't rub their chest or belly hardly ever unless we're doing scent work or recalls because it's like a special praise that they get when they do those things, okay? And then even when they are recalling without needing the lead anymore, I still give a pretty good amount of praise every time they come in. And then when they're, you know, maybe we've been doing this for six months or so, I start to back that off, but I still will occasionally kind of go a little over the top on praise when they come in. Okay, time and opportunity. One thing to not do that will set you back is if you're doing, for instance, this usually happens in something like doing a down stay exercise or something like that. And the dog is breaking position because maybe you're trying to build more time or more distance, or maybe you're working with other dogs and they're getting distracted uh, by the other dogs coming to them. And so um, you're in this situation where your dog's broken a couple times and you are going to get them, right? Because when they break, you correct, you put them back in their position. And uh, so you're going to get them and they're avoiding you or you're just being lazy and you call your dog to you, get their lead and then correct them. Do not ever do that. Don't ever call your dog to you and then correct them when they get there. Okay? If you call your dog during for any reason, if they're off uh, if they're out roaming around, they got their lead on like they should until they earn the right to not have that on. And um and they've broken position, they're doing anything they're not supposed to do, and rather than go and get them, you're going to call them to you. You just have to realize you have lost the right to correct that dog at that point. I called them. They came. I, I might not give a lot of praise in that situation. I might just go good, go and then take them back to their thing. You can reset and stuff like that. But that number one is being lazy. So try not to do it. And number two, um, it's being undisciplined and you are going to create more of the problems that you have. So the best thing to do is you go and you get the dog, which is why they should always have a lead attached to them. You go and you get them. We often will walk up and step on the lead, reach down, then they get their correction depending on the dog and the level and all that. And we go into all the detail on how to do this properly in the academy. Um, And then they get taken back to their place and continue the exercises and the drills to build that discipline and obedience. So, um, but do not call your dog to you and then correct them when they get there. That will have a negative impact on your recall with your dog. All right. So build the bond, reel them in, give lots and lots of praise And then do not correct them if you decide to call them to you because of some exercise or drill that you're doing. So those are your three things that you do. All right. Hope this has been helpful. We'll do another one tomorrow. And uh, if you haven't already, go over and check out K9AcademyOnline.com. That's the letter K, the number nine, AcademyOnline.com. You can get all of our training there and um, look forward to seeing you guys out there.